Hello there, my loyal battle brothers, and welcome to your usual Saturday video on Space Marine Chapters. Without a doubt, also my longest running series on the entire channel. So, after no less than six episodes on the saga of the Crimson Sabres and its rather tragic conclusion, I thought it would be a bit more relaxing to have a one episode chapter today before we once again embark on a longer miniseries. And what better way to do this than by talking about another successor of the Blood Angels. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the Angels in Carmine. Alas, don't forget to stay until the end of the video and vote on another future chapter. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Angels in Carmine is a second founding successor chapter of the Blood Angels, so they do have the age and the prestige. Out of all the Sons of Sanguinius though, the Angels in Carmine are considered by many of their fellow successor chapters as the most aloof, displaying a contemptuous disregard for the weak. Indeed, their arrogance surpasses even that of the Blood Angels themselves. It is said by the archivists of the Blood Angels, although they probably say it out of spite, that no Space Marine chapter is as active as the Angels in Carmine. Their previous chapter master, or Castellan as they are also called, Zargo, could never find any peace, so he forever sought opportunity to lead his brothers in campaign. As a result, this eternal crusade, no pun intended, led to a high rate of attrition among the ranks of the chapter battle brothers, resulting in the angels in Carmine very rarely being at full strength. What the chapter lacks in numbers though, is more than willing to compensate in fervor. They have never once denied a request for aid by the Imperial forces, and have won the approbation of chapter masters and planetary governors alike for their boundless and selfless heroism. The angels in Carmine do share many traits with their progenitor chapter, the Blood Angels, including the omnipresent genetic flaw which afflicts so many of their line. This curse can manifest itself in many different ways, but in the case of the angels in Carmine, it has led them to a fiery, zealous temperament, which in turn drives them to ever greater heights of valor. It has been surmised that the angels in Carmine fight in this manner as a means of staving off the worst effects of the blood angel's genetic flaw, but some other well-placed observers whisper that these guys actually fight like this so they could purge their ranks of those in the grip of the Black Rage. Just like their genetic progenitors, this chapter suffers from both the flaws of the Red First and the Black Rage. Those most afflicted by the Black Rage are placed in a death company similar to those deployed by the Blood Angels and many of their successors. It has been noted that this company rarely has less than 30 battle brothers, making it larger than most death companies of other successor chapters. This could be evidence of an acceleration in the numbers of Battle Brothers falling to the Black Rage, a fact that could have heralded the eventual doom of the chapter had the Primaris Marines not been introduced to reinforce their numbers. Some campaigns these guys took part in include The Gathering of Heroes, 266M37 a mighty force of the Blood Angels, the Angels in Carmine, and the Blood Drinkers chapters engage the traitor forces on the Archaeotech world of Hell's Hollow. Although the Chaos armies were put swiftly to the sword, the attack of the Space Marines came too late to prevent their completion of a heretical and vile ritual. The veil was pierced, and the tide of demons spilled through into the world's cities. The Blood Angels and their brothers did react to this development with typical courage and resolve. The main strength of the strike force was deployed in a series of holding actions, stemming the demonic tide just long enough for the death company to be hurled against the ritual site itself. Amidst an orgy of violence, the black armored space marines slaughtered everything in their path, closing the rift at the price of their lives. The Achilles Crusade 801M41. Because of the chapter's restless nature and the desire to prosecute the foes of the Imperium, it is not surprising that they sent a task force in the Achilles Crusade. 
The chapter's first recorded appearance in the region was in 801 M41, when a demi-company-sized battle force took part in a series of fleet actions against renegade vessels on the outskirts of the Blood Trinity region. The battles came to a head with the boarding of a chaos battleship known as the Symphony of Pain, during which the Angels in Carbone fought their way from their boarding point through the twisting and winding corridors in order to mount an attack on the ship's bridge. Although their company champion was able to cut down the ship master, a massive counterattack was then launched by the heretics. The chapter did not withdraw before completing the mission, however, setting structural decompression charges key to a dead man fuse. Although most of the angels in Carmine were cut down by the counterattack and massively outnumbered by hordes of screaming heretics, the company champion and several of his brothers did fight their way back to the boarding vessel and escaped. With the Symphony of Pain crippled, the company champion then took the Apocryphon Oath, serving three consecutive vigils of the Long Watch before he finally returned to the chapter in 810 M41. At this point, he was both a hero of the Angels in Carmine and of the Death Watch itself. In 991 M41, elements of the Angels in Carmine participated in the Imperial effort to reclaim Rin's world, the homeworld of the Crimson Fist chapter from the Orcs of Was Nagrod. The Stromark Civil War A political rivalry within the Stromark system would lead to a civil war between the system's two Manufactorum worlds, Stromark Primus and Stromark Secundus which coexisted within their own star system all this time. The escalating violence halted the flow of much-needed weapons and supplies from these planets to the wider Imperium, a situation that the Departamento Minotaurum determined could not let lie. Thus, elements of two successor chapters of the Blood Angels, the Angels in Carmine and the Flesh Terrors, were dispatched to the Stromark system with the mandate to end the conflict by any means possible. It would be the fighting on Stromark Prime that was the first to stop. The first engagement of the Flesh Terrors was also their last one, as stories of the unstoppable space marines hacking a path through tens of thousands of Stromarkian warriors quickly terrified the population of the planet into submission. Stromark Secundus, on the other hand, took a bit longer to be pacified, as the angels in Carmine used less direct methods than their savage brothers of the Flesh Terrors. Eventually, five of the chapter's Furioso Dreadnoughts smashed into Stromark Secundus' military headquarters and tore the planet's high command apart. The surviving officers of the enemy PDF wisely agreed to quickly stop the conflict and end the fighting with their neighbors and resume meeting of the system's crucial production quota. The Angels in Carmine are pretty much the same, organization-wise, as their progenitor, the Blood Angels chapter. As such, they are not a fully Codex-compliant chapter, as it used to be barely at half strength. It has been observed that the chapter's death company, the formation into which those suffering of the flaw are grouped into, is larger than most of its fellow Blood Angel successors. This could point out to an acceleration in the numbers of Battle Brothers falling prone to the Black Rage, at least before the introduction of the primary Space Marines. One of the most sacred relics of the chapter is known as Red Dawn. And no, it does not involve Soviet or North Korean Space Marines. Although said to have been the favored weapon of a long-departed Death Watch Watch Captain, this Power Axe of the Angels in Carmine has a very long history on the front lines of the Death Watch's most perilous missions. Its unique power field maintains a barely perceptible haze over the blade when dormant. But when the blade bites flesh or armor, it flares with an incandescent scarlet glow like a newborn star. This can rip through almost any enemy with no more resistance than mist. The power armor of the Angels in Carmine is painted, wait for it, red with black trim and black backpack and a yellow aquila symbol or imperialis on the chest plate. Just like many successors of the Blood Angels, and the Blood Angels themselves obviously, the Angels in Carmine do maintain an elite strike force of assault marines known as the Sanguinary Guard, 
and obviously the Death Company to contain the Space Marines falling to the Red First and the Black Rage. However, the colors of their Death Company and Sanguinary Guard are alabaster white, with black shoulder trim and backpack. They do still bear the blood red salt tires to symbolize the wounds of the Blood Angel's Primarch after he was slain by the Archdouchebag Horus at the end of the Horus Heresy. Their chapter badge is a single red droplet of blood with a pair of ebon bat like wings protruding from the sides, all of it centered on a field of red. For the poll of today, you can choose between three chapters, which I'll start covering next weekend. I know I asked you before what you think about homebrew chapters, but for the time being, Saturdays are still gonna be reserved for canon chapters and nothing else. So, for the next time. Option A is the Excoriators chapter, Option B is the Lion Sable chapter, and Option C is the White Consoles chapter. To vote, simply write down your choice in the comments below. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about this Blood Angel successor chapter known as the Angels in Carmine for today. Did you know about these guys before? Are they among your favorite Blood Angel successors? Or maybe even Space Marine chapters overall? What do you like or dislike most about them? If you have any thoughts, stories or questions about them, do share them in the comments below as always. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. You can also click the bell notification icon to stay more up to date. Thank you very much for watching and have an awesome and healthy day. The Emperor protects.